Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel, All About Being. This is going to be a pretty simple session again on um, something called precedence constraint. Those who are coming from SSIS background, right? Precedence constraint. They will be knowing this precedence constraints. Those who are working on Azure Data Factory, they can relate it with the dependency arrows that we use in the use between the activities. Okay, these are the uh, precedence constraint that we that we used to call in. Uh, SSIS okay as you can see here in data factory or synapse pipeline right there is no um, way we can add an expression in between two activities okay so it is purely dependent on the execution status of the previous activity for instance if I have to run this for each loop I am connecting this green arrow which means if the preceding activity succeeds I have to ex ex execute the for each activity similarly if I have a condition to execute this for each loop activity when the previous activity fails right I will be dragging and dropping this so if my requirement is to uh, execute for each loop activity if the previous activity completes irrespective of the status of the previous activity what I will do I will use the um, blue arrow so this means that uh, get metadata activity can fail as well as it can succeed whatever be it once the execution completes um, the next activity has to be executed so this is what this blue arrow means so there is one more arrow we can make use of which is nothing but the skipped so uh, there are certain situations where the previous activity might be skipped based on certain logic okay if that is the case and uh, we want to execute the next activity when the previous activity is skipped we can make use of this gray arrow okay uh, here there would be one common use case okay um, wherein we wanted to check a table okay this table's uh, row count should be greater than zero only if the table's row count is greater than zero we are going to do some copy activity or data flow activity so how to implement this using um, the arrows or using the dependencies in data factory if it is SSIS right it would be very simple we can use precedence constraint precedence constraint along with expressions okay so how it works is we will have a um, execute SQL act task this execute SQL task will find the row count and uh, there will be another data flow activity following the SQL activity so both these activities or tasks will be connected using a precedence constraint okay plus an expression what expression we would write we would simply write if row count is greater than a zero okay so both the precedence as well as the logic will go on top of the arrow that we used to see in SSIS but we cannot write any expression like row count greater than zero on the arrows in data factory or synapse pipeline so what we will do in that scenario I am going to show you that okay so <coughs> I have a script activity uh, which is going to which is similar to the execute SQL task in SSIS okay so this script activity is very simple it is calculating the row count from my test table I have an Azure SQL table called test okay I am taking the count uh, of rows in that table and I call it as row count okay so this script activity will be executing and giving me the row count under the column name row count all right so I am going to use an if condition this is the expression that we used to use in um, SSIS precedence constraint but since we we cannot use any such expression on the arrows in data factory we have to use this if condition here so what is the condition here a script to once output dot result set of zero um, dot rows of zero dot row count I will execute it and show you and then it will make sense <coughs> so what this if condition is doing the previous script activity if it has brought um, row count greater than zero then I am going to do some uh, uh, logic I am going to do some copy activity or data flow activity inside the true condition right now I am putting wait here just to test okay in real time it will be a copy data activity or a data flow activity alright so let it run script has executed and if you look at the results right uh, result sets this is an array and inside the result set rows it is again an array and inside the rows there is a property called row count this is the column name that we gave in 
script activity okay so how do we access this output of the script activity dot result set of zero so since this is an array and there is only one element in the array we can call that element with the index zero okay so result set of zero and then inside this result set of zero there is another array called rows array inside that rows also we just have one one single element if you see here one single element is there okay rows of zero inside that rows of zero you have a property called row count okay so i think it it would have been uh, easier now to understand i'll just copy it and then put it in the expression window so that you can relate it uh, right away all right so what i'm checking um, script one's output dot result set of zero result set of zero would be uh, this and inside this you have rows rows of zero would be the whole element and inside the rows of uh, zero you have the row count okay so uh, we are accessing that uh, row count and we are comparing it with the greater function okay greater function uh, it it will take the row count from the previous script activity and it checks if the result written by the script is greater than zero or not now okay so this is the whole uh, expression that we need to use in order to get the row count that is written by our script activity and once if the condition succeeds it will go to the true condition uh, there are two parts right two true part and false part uh, so once uh, if the previous um, script has brought more than zero record in the table i will go and execute uh, copy data activity inside the true part false part you can ignore or you can uh, log some error whatever it is according to your logic okay this is what i wanted to uh, share in this video this is a very uh, common scenario that we'll all make use of in the in our regular project so uh, i just came across this question in one of the forums and thought i'll i'll share it with uh, all of you okay so thanks a lot uh, for watching that's all with uh, this video if you have any questions let me know in the comment section thank you so much